Your United States Air Force presents Tops in Sports. This is Harry Wismer. What you're about to hear is a transcribed program featuring the outstanding personalities in the world of sports. Their most exciting moments, their outstanding plays and thrills. These are stories that will live forever as tops in sports. In a moment, the story of the famous Dempsey Tunney long count fight. But first, here is a message of interest from your United States Air Force. Navigator to pilot. All right, Joe, the target's been covered. Let's go home. Fly a new heading of 337. Pilot to navigator. Well, genius, you did it again. Put us right on the target. What do you got back there, a crystal ball? No crystal ball. Navigators in the U.S. Air Force rely on their superb training, on science, and their brains. That's why young men have to be smart and educated before they're even eligible for aviation cadet navigator training. But if you can qualify, an exciting career of executive opportunity can be yours. As a navigator, you'll be a key member of the aerospace team. You'll be familiar with electronics, radar, and all the forms of aerial navigating in this age of air travel and space exploration. To qualify for aviation cadet navigator training, you must be between 19 and 26 and a half and be an above average citizen. Your local Air Force recruiter will give you full details. Now back to Harry Wismer. Did you ever hear the story of the long count? How one of our great heavyweight champions, perhaps the greatest of all time, almost became the first ex-title holder to regain the crown. Well, that's the story we're telling today. How over 100,000 fans paid two and one half million dollars to see one of the most exciting and certainly the most controversial fight of all time. It's the story of the Gene Tunney-Jack Dempsey rematch. You all remember their first meeting in Philadelphia? Tunney did everything to Dempsey that night but knock him out. The killer of the ring was helpless before the superb boxer that was Tunney. Dempsey chased and chased, slipping and slashing over the rain-soaked canvas, pursuing the ex-Marine to all corners and to all sides of the ring. And all Dempsey did was run into a bewildering, blistering, blinding barrage of stiff left jabs and accurate right crosses to the face. It was an exhibition of boxing skill no heavyweight had flashed since the days of Jim Corbett. For the first time in history, a world's heavyweight championship changed hands on a ten-round decision. Jack Dempsey's pride was hurt in this defeat. He confided to promoter Tex Rickard that he could beat Tunney if given another chance. With visions of the greatest box office match in ring history, Rickard immediately went to work. Tunney wasn't too hard selling. He felt he could whip Dempsey every time they met. The more than $700,000 that Dempsey, as the champion, had received in the first fight had really opened up Gene's eyes. However, there was one hitch in the staging of a return bout. By now, it was questioned by many whether Dempsey or Jack Sharkey, the fighting ex-sailor from Boston, was the outstanding challenger. Sharkey had won a lot of support when he stopped Harry Wills in 13 rounds. Rickard decided a Dempsey-Sharkey elimination match would solve the problem. The winner to fight Tunney. The bout took place at the Yankee Stadium in New York on July 21st, and Dempsey won by a knockout in the seventh round. So the stage was set for the battle of the century. Boxer against slugger, gentleman against roughneck. These were the ingredients to make a great fight. When they faced each other in the middle of the ring at Soldiers Field in Chicago... Dempsey weighed in at 192 and a half, while Tunney hit the scales at 189 and one half. The fight was a resumption of the Philadelphia battle for six rounds. Dempsey chased Tunney, and Tunney boxed circles around the ex-champion, thrusting aside Dempsey's savage lunges for the most part with no more effort than would have been necessary in a gymnasium workout. The champion was the master. Dempsey kept trying, but he couldn't once hit Gene with a solid smash to any vital spot. From the opening bell, Dempsey kept boring into Tunney. Each of his savagely aimed punches were plainly labeled knockout. 
But Tunney stood up to the raw anger, the explosive impatience of the black-haired Manasseh Mahler, and put on a demonstration of counterpunching that had even the most ardent Dempsey rooters blinking in admiration. Gene's left hand was like a marine bayonet, and he stuck it in Dempsey's face without any let-up. It was more than just a defensive measure. Within a few rounds, it began to break up and lump the old champion's face. Jack looked very slow. During the fifth and sixth rounds, even Dempsey's supporters were beginning to feel sorry for what was to come. Then it happened. Now before Thompson Sports brings you in detail the thrilling blow-by-blow account of the seventh round in the controversial Dempsey-Tunney long count fight, here is a message of interest to all young men who want to go places faster. You probably have heard lots of talk recently about getting ahead in the aerospace age. Two important questions for you are, where do I go for the finest and most complete training, and where are the greatest career opportunities available? The answer to both questions is, in the United States Air Force. Quite logically, the Air Force has the broadest and most complete range of aerospace age training. That's because the Air Force is in charge of thousands of jets, rockets, and missiles. In the years to come, Air Force participation in space projects will grow, and so will a number of career fields. So be wise. Join the Air Force for valuable training and bright career opportunities. In addition, you'll have a chance for foreign travel, receive 30-day annual paid vacations, and other extras. Get the full story on the Air Force career tailored to your abilities. There's a place for tomorrow's leaders on the aerospace team. See your local Air Force recruiter now. September 22nd, 1927, Soldiers Field, Chicago, the seventh round of the Dempsey Tunney Long Count. This is Harry Wismer speaking to you from ringside at the second Dempsey Tunney fight in Chicago. And there's the bell for the seventh round. Dempsey is slow getting off his stool. He looks a little tired. Tunney looking fresh and well conditioned comes out of his corner and moves towards the Manasseh Mahler. They spar around for just a moment, and now Gene snaps two straight lefts to Dempsey's face that send Jack back on his heels. And the challenger immediately falls into a clinch, and the referee breaks them apart. Tunney comes in now over at the far side of the ring. Dempsey in that crouch weaves back and forth and now lashes out with a left to the body and a right to the side of Tunney's face. Tunney counters with a flurry of stinging jabs to Jack's head. And once again, they fall into a clinch with the referee coming in to break them apart. Two minutes to go in the round. Dempsey down very low now. This is the champion once again. Dean leads with a left that just misses. Jack keeps pouring in as Tunney again snakes out with that left jab and misses it again. Jack in close now. Throws a left hook to Tunney's jaw. And fans, this one found his mark. Tunney is hurt. He staggers back. Dempsey is right on top of him, sending a left. Now a right to the champion's jaw. There's another right and a left. All solid blows by the Manasseh Mahler. Tunney is reeling. Dempsey tears in after him. The crowd has gone wild. Tunney is hit with another left hook to the jaw by Dempsey. And Tunney is down. The champion is down. The crowd is up on its feet. Referee Dave Barry starts his count. Dempsey stands in the corner right over the fallen Tunney. Barry motions him back. Two, three. Barry once more points to Dempsey to move away, to go to a neutral corner. Five. The knockdown timekeeper is counting right along with the referee. But wait a minute. Barry finally gets Dempsey to move to a neutral corner as Tunney gets up to a sitting position. And Barry starts to count all over again. One. Crowd behind is screaming six. Barry now has two. Tunney is now on one knee trying to grab the middle rope. Four, five, six. It should be 12 by now. But Barry only has seven. Tunney pulls himself erect as Barry counts nine. In this crowd at the ringside is screaming that the fight is over. Less than a minute to go now in round seven. Dempsey moves in again, hoping to end it now. The crowd yells for him to finish the champion. Dempsey lands a left and a right to the body of Gene. And Tunney, who seems very dazed, is now backpedaling, holding out that left hand of his to ward off the onrushing Dempsey. Dempsey still after the champion. Can't seem to find the mark. Tunney continues to move backwards, hands high. His legs seem a trifle wobbly. How can Tunney stay out of the range of Dempsey's fists? 
The crowd is roaring. Not much time left in the round. Gepsy pins Tunney against the ropes and flails away at the body. But the champion once again squirms loose and gets on his bicycle. Dempsey has stopped in the middle of the ring. His arms are outstretched. He seems to be begging Tunney, pleading with him to stand still and fight. I've never seen anything like this before. Jack is angry. He lashes out at Tunney. But Tunney now is completely recovered and gets on his bike once again. There he goes off to his left, then to his right. Dempsey chases after Tunney again, but can't land an effective blow. And there's the bell, ending round seven. What a round! The crowd is now booing Tunney and the referee. Fans, the rest is history. In the eighth round, Tunney was himself again. At the bell, he came out of his corner with his right cock and triggered a shot off Dempsey's jaw that sent the ex-champion to the floor on one knee. Jack came up without a count. But unlike Gene, he came back for more. How he ever managed to stay on his feet for the rest of the fight remains one of boxing's greatest mysteries. Dempsey was finished, and everybody knew it. But he kept coming on, and the crowd loved him for it. Nobody who saw it will ever forget the courage and greatness displayed by the Manasseh Mahler that night. And for 14 seconds of the seventh round, he was the most magnificent fighter of all time. To this day, Dempsey's followers insist that Jack had been the victim of an injustice. They claim he should have been awarded a knockout in the seventh round, and only referee Dave Barry's stubbornness in enforcing the neutral corner rule prevented him from regaining the title. Recently, I saw Gene Tunney and asked him to comment on that historic seventh round. And this is what he said. Well, uh, I have nothing more to say than has been written about it. Uh, Jack Dempsey was a great fighter. Jack was uh, one of the, I think, the greatest fighters that ever lived. And uh, when he struck me those seven punches in the seventh round, I went down and uh, I looked up and saw that he was rather tired from his efforts. So I decided to stay on the floor until he could get his win back. There has never been a more controversial ring issue in history. In defeat, Jack Dempsey gained more popularity than he ever enjoyed as champion. Gene Tunney, never very popular with the public because of his seemingly lofty indifference to the fight game and its followers, became even more irritating because of his two victories over the beloved Dempsey. It took the public many years to accept Gene Tunney not only as one of the great figures of boxing's golden age, but as a man of character, courage, intelligence, and determination. He is recognized today as one of our greatest champions. To those who saw it, there can never be another night like the one at Soldiers Field, Chicago, September 1927, when Jack Dempsey floored Gene Tunney for the long count and came within seconds of becoming the first man in the history of boxing to ever regain the heavyweight championship. You have been listening to Tops in Sports, narrated by Harry Wismer and written by Arthur Suskin, Jr., This is a Gene Kirby production presented by the United States Air Force in cooperation with this station. The preceding was transcribed.